on the topic of live services. Things like crossplay, seasonal events, consistent updates, appealing marketplaces, and incentive for daily logins are not optional. They are necessary. If forced to only choose one of these categories, Marvel, an 80-year-old property with decades of comic books, cartoons, TV shows, movies, should easily be capable of, if nothing else, executing an appealing marketplace, skins, emotes, takedowns, props for decorations, potentially even digital comic books available to be read in-game. Fans have and will pay for skins of their favorite heroes that have dominated culture for the better half of two decades. So please, tell me why Square Enix's Marvel's Avengers has the worst, overpriced, and unappealing shops in any Marvel game, and somehow, with the games as a service model, is refusing to offer comic book skins to fans that they know will pay for it. Sadly, we may never receive an answer because of what I wish to speak about today. I hope you're listening, developers. Logically, I imagine Crystal Dynamics' current mentality is, when we have something to report, we'll dump the information. But the frustration among the remaining loyal player base is justified, considering many of these people are respectfully and eloquently posing their very real problems that have persisted for a month after launch. Problems including, but not limited to, non-functional matchmaking, certain heroes not receiving drops, worse gear when playing with a group, single-player focused endgame activities in your multiplayer focused live service, things that'll make people just want to play offline if they're playing at all. But most importantly, a lack of communication as it pertains to any update timelines, roadmaps, or war table dates. If this game were a restaurant and the devs were waiters, you'd be dehydrating and starving because you can't get no damn service. The waiter devs would then make a public statement about how the food and drink uh, they brought out was totally fine, ignoring the fact that the food and drink clipped right through the plate and the glass before it ever made it to the table. On the Avenger subreddit in response to the weekly blog that was just posted, user Cap in Yo Ass writes, I really hate to add negativity and I'm in this for the long haul with this game, but the lack of self-awareness in these blogs is making me crazy. They're talking about features of the game in the state that it's supposed to be in, not the state of the game as it currently stands. People are desperate for any sort of meaningful communication, and this is about as far from that as I can imagine. Since launch, it's been soon, soon, coming soon, and then today, True to form, literally two sentences about the next patch slash content drop boils down to essentially soon. I don't even need the content now. I understand they're facing bizarre problems and that this must be especially difficult to accomplish considering how disjointed the team must be. But sweet Christ, I just want some open communication about what those problems are and how they are impacting the schedule. I'd sell my organs just for the date of the next war table at this point. Well, I wouldn't go that far, but I feel he's eloquently and a hell of a lot more respectfully made his point than I would, that's for sure. Another user by the name Mr. Joe Mazing writes, My honest feedback are that these war table blogs are terrible. They annoy much more than they inform or create hype. Here are some things that should be in these weekly blogs that the community would prefer. Previews of new unreleased cosmetics that are not just recolors. Sharing the design philosophy behind aspects of your game, such as why endgame sources of loot are currently only to be played solo. The gear rarity system, uh, perhaps even elaborating on the intent of exotic gear. Upcoming patch previews with a release date, teases of previews or new content. Updates on parts of the game CD plans to redesign somewhat down the road. 
answering popular community questions, interviews with developers, etc. The thing is, CD, these people aren't demanding you ask how high when they tell you to jump. They just want you to throw them a bone. The way that the Square Enix YouTube channel threw me a bone a few days back. I went to the Square Enix channel to leave a comment on a recent upload. Like the punk I am, so what I do on the internet. Nothing too rude, just a typical online bants. I wrote, and I quote, Is this that game with under 2,000 players? Oh yeah! I made a video about it. A user named Frosty responds, Square Enix needs to watch your vids about the game. Square Enix responds, You've been heard. Appreciate your feedback and your videos as impassioned as they are. Our team at Crystal is working hard. Thanks. I respond, Holy hell, you guys are amazing for this. And Square Enix responds, did you really think that we were aim bots or something? Come on, Kyel. We saw your video. Nothing is perfect. And your video is far from the only in-depth feedback our team at Crystal Dynamics is listening to from all over. So, hey, quote that in your next video. Thanks for the holy hell. We needed that. Well, we've been experiencing fresh hell at the hands of you guys, so... Don't let it ever be said that there's only two villains in Marvel's Avengers because Crystal Dynamics is clearly in the midst of some ARG where they are our personal supervillain. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, it's a joke. I was admittedly impressed to know that someone, anyone, related to this game was listening. Especially to know someone who wasn't pretending that this game was the single defining moment of their life overreacting and getting ridiculous on the internet qualified to be listened to. If I could feel like my voice didn't qualify to be heard, then so can many others. I frequent the Avengers Discord, I'm on the subreddit, and I see people blaming players who bring their issues to light. You always have people immediately going, well, that's never happened to me, as if it invalidates sometimes what people have video evidence to the effect of. They'll proclaim, oh, you know, everything's buggy at launch. It's just things like this firmly turn people away from this game, potentially for good. There's a likelihood that there's no content that's going to bring them back, considering the taste that was left in their mouth the last time they booted this up. But in the spirit of being real, the issue that I personally considered the most perplexing is this being a Marvel property and having little in the way of skins. This game wholeheartedly feels like it is in no way interested in my money. Yes, the things in the shop are overpriced, but if they were the right things, people would buy them. No disrespect to whoever's job, it must be to wave the unsexy stick at the comic book skins before putting them in. But why in God's name would you spend more effort on adapting a skin into something that people will like less? than its comic book counterpart. Do you or don't you have permission to use this license? Players have no issue with the interesting takes that you have on these Marvel characters, but what they want, and allow me to phrase this properly, what they are willing to pay for are comic book skins. Don't change them. Don't cover them up. Don't try to convert them uh, from another skin and then give up like halfway into it. Please full ass this because it's terrifying to see a game not even care about its microtransactions. The shrug worthy cosmetics are what I consider a perfect microcosm of this title as a whole. I'm not joking when I say this. I'm dead serious. I'm worried about you. All of you. Something is clearly going on that you can't say. But we're just, oh, we, well, we want to figuratively jump in the mystery machine right now. But it's like, you know, I, I'm not even in the game. I'm, I, you, I've been playing Genshin Impact. I'm really sorry. I'm having a time of my life. And if I may make something clear, Genshin didn't charge me to start playing it. And I freely chose to spend a small amount of money on it. In Marvel's Avengers, I have not spent any money past the price of admission for this game, 
but even with what you have given me via the uh, challenge cards, I haven't bought anything from the marketplace because I, I just don't feel like anything's worth the price. I don't consider anything appealing enough to buy. Now, I hate to invoke the other kings on their thrones, but Destiny, Warframe, Fortnite, Fortnite who's in the middle of their own Marvel event right now, their skins could be considered nothing but irresistible. That Jim Lee 90s look with the Wolverine and Storm, come on. I get the feeling we aren't going to be seeing that kind of thing in this game. And my question to you as I end this video is why Crystal Dynamics? You can't just jump onto the subreddit and say, hey, we're, we're not sure, so don't pin us down with this, but we are moving and hoping for an end of the week timeline for a war table, for our next patch, for an update with this. You can't just say that. Why? Is the plug about to be pulled? We're big boys, you gotta tell us. Bad, 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 bad skins, tell us why. Poor, 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 poor communication, tell us why. Surely, surely at the very least, y'all gotta be polishing this game to re-release it on the PS5, right? It's gonna make it through then, right? Ooh, I'm so confused, I'm so confused. Get at me though, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I've, every man has their price. Crystal Dynamics, you know. I'm trying to work. I'm. I could be. We could be in this together. Put some damn skins in the game. All right. What the hell? Ugh. <laughs>